Good evening, it's Joyful Hermit. I had just, in part one, got cut off, or had to cut off, when my pain doctor was ready with a video appointment because of my continuing nausea and trying to figure out what it is and get something that will help simmer it down. So we were talking about all the different things that had gone on. He has to keep track of everything with the pain patient and medications for them. You have to document everything. The two times I was in ER and, and the bile duct ending up um, by the second doctor not being that enlarged, not as no big deal to him, for him and per the, what the radiologist wrote, but that doctor didn't mention that the radiologist had written because it comes to my laptop also as we have access to our files now. And um, the bile duct was obscured quite a bit in the MRI image, so they couldn't see it all or even a lot of it to know. So I've got the gastroenterologist, hopefully, he's the nurse knows to ask him to look at the scan and the MRI, just trying to eliminate because I think it's going to boil down to being my arachnoiditis. Well, my pain doctor, is he is very scientific, and he wants a logical, physiological reason. And he's talking about how the vagus nerve is up high and comes down low, and that the arachnoiditis locus is in my lumbar. Well, I don't want to get into it with him, because he wasn't well. That's why we were having the video appointment. But the arachnoiditis, just because its locus is in the messed up clumped nerve, oddly clumped nerves, are in my L4-5 area, doesn't mean that it isn't affecting the nerves going up and down the spine. And those nerves send out neurological impulses all over the body. That's why arachnoiditis has all these odd, mysterious symptoms, like, you know how I'm scratching... <laughs> I get, it's like bugs crawling on my back at times. It's been like water flowing down my legs or out of my feet. Or, you know, it used to feel like thick, thick coming out of the bottom of my feet. Um, I haven't had that symptom in a while. Um, it, of course, pain down the legs, the feet, uh, down the spine. It, and with me, I have felt literally from the lumbar r radiating through to my stomach. In the past, that's what I related it with. When the lumbar was in pain, it would radiate. I had a pump surgery three years ago, of which the arachnoiditis got irked. Anytime you do an injection into the spine cord area or a surgery involving the spine with the spinal cord running in there, not that you're even, not of course not touching, getting into the spinal cord, but into the dural space around the spinal cord. And um, so you're going through the uh, up close and, and through membranes and things. So it, that's a given with arachnoiditis. If you have an injection in your spinal cord area or a surgery involving it, like the tube went into my dural space and up into the spinal cord, releasing dilaudid hydromorphone in there that's supposed to be handling my lumbar pain. And we hesitate to increase that more. Maybe it will have to. But the last time we increased it, it lasted a couple of days. The, the effect of relief. And then the nausea was right back. So we're going to try some other medication for nausea. It's a kind that when nothing else works. And um, I tried a different uh, pain med for tonight that I happen to have from another surgery that's never been that effective for me. But... Figure we may as well try, you know, who knows? The body can change and react differently. Maybe it will help the nausea somehow. Um, so that's what we were talking about that. And I thought I would bring up, well, he's going to, I said, look up Google arachnoiditis and nausea because he wasn't aware that nausea was a symptom. And it wasn't three years ago when I was researching for my pump surgery. I had to dig deep, and I found it in a study done by a doctor in England. 
who, who uh, sort of focuses on arachnoiditis in her own research. But there's no active studies being done, research done on it in this country, the United States currently. Um, it's so rare. Why bother? You know, it's like there's not enough people to warrant the cost and the time of research. They have had, um, you know, patient studies before, group studies. Um, there's just none now. And it's, it's a bizarre one to try to figure out because, and he was saying, you know, well, I don't see the, you know, the connection with the vagus that that would cause nausea, but arachnoiditis can cause the nausea, just the nerve, the damaged nerves, somehow sending signals to the, to the gastrointestinal tract. It does, I don't think it has to be connected to the vagus nerve. It's not logical. And um, it's the spinal cord nerves are like on a misfire constantly. And you can, and in fact, the, the pain when it's high gets um, trapped energy in my lumbar. And it will affect my phone if I'm holding my phone down by my waist, my laptop. Uh, so I sometimes wonder if the sound, when it isn't good, and I have my sound up, that maybe my lump, my arachnoiditis is affecting my laptop because it's done it before. It affects the sound on my phone. It affects registers at stores, especially if I was later in the day and had been walking on concrete like Home Depot and Lowe's when I was actively getting supplies for my house. I have all my supplies now, or the bulk of them. They're in the garage and laying around all over the house. But um, I, it would interfere with their registers. And I would just explain, I have this condition with my lumbar, and I'm going to go stand way over there and see if that helps. Being, you know, oh, yes, they're working now. So it's just strange like that. And um, it just causes electronic interference. When I first moved in here, the uh, couple had put in, an elderly couple had put in a new dishwasher because the other one had gone out. And I never used it, never had touched it, never even figured out how to turn it on. I wash out my little bowl or my little plate. I don't eat much. I just eat in a little bowls. I can't eat a lot at one time with this um, if I can eat. So um, so it, I was standing across the room and I hear this noise and this sound of water gushing. And I'm like, oh my, what's that? And it was the dishwasher turned on. It did it twice from when I had my pain up and was standing across. So good luck to my pain doctor, <laughs> you know, because he wants a physiological reason. He's very brainy, but also very compassionate. He's trying to figure this out to help me. He wants to help. Mm -hmm. And I started then to try to explain to him that in my life, because he, he knows we've had religious conversations a lot, and he knows that I'm very religious and that, that I am, um, you know, religious. But I said that sometimes when I am not quite on the right path, uh, that God will use temporal means, often my body, to hinder me from being distracted, from getting back out into the world or into some other uh, endeavor if he wants me focused on something. And I said, so no more pickleball, not doing that, because that may have brought this attack on, this siege on, or the, the physical therapist putting me on my stomach and tor you know, torqued my lumbar the way I was positioned for he, him to pu pull my leg back to get a stretch on my upper thigh. And uh, twice, and, and pickleball that night, beginner, and then the next day of each of those days, and the second time, I've been down ever since, sick ever since. Um, taking Zofran, I've started taking two at a time. Helps a little, but not a lot. So he's going to try this other medication. But I started to explain, and I said, you know, when I had my death experience years ago, which I told him I had that before, but I got the date wrong. He says, I don't believe in reincarnation. He says, I don't go for that. He somehow thought that that was 
somehow connected because I had the date wrong. I got I had this head injury and it's right in my memory area so I get sometimes words or numbers. So I had the numbers mixed up instead of 1987. I said I think 1837 or something. Anyway, and I corrected it right away. But he immediately thought, you know, because he knows I'm Catholic and he thinks that I'm not a usual Catholic because the Catholics he's heard about have all these bizarre ideas. So he's always hypersensitive that I'm, um, you know, going to, that I'm believing something that's false. I'm, I'm following the Gnostic Gospels or I'm, uh, <laughs> or like today, you know, reincarnation. You know, I said, no, I don't believe in that. But I, that was the signal. He isn't going to understand. Stop right there. Don't share. Don't share your inner. Don't share your spiritual. I'm not giving him my my YouTube handle <laughs> by any means. So if we have to discern when people can handle it or not. And um, we just don't know. So I've been in the physical therapist's office. This is where I was talking about in the other video. And um, so I uh, gradually would talk about more things and about God and, and insights and experiences. And I talked about you know starting to do videos. And I, he doesn't know my handle either, but of just how rewarding it has been and helpful to me anyway to go over things of my past and um, and also to get my a zeal for God renewed and back on my mission, my mission that God sent me back for, which is what I was trying to tell the pain duck. You know, I was sent back to rear my children. They're reared. I had a hard time detaching from them, admit it, and not that I was right on them, but I just, in just a normal way, but given their circumstances, I explained in another video, the last video, or time before, um, they're burned out. They, they don't want it. Uh, it reminds them of other times, or they want their freedom. They don't want to have to worry about the problems I'm always having, health-wise and through bizarre events in my life, of bad things happening, the devil beating on me, um, the devil allowed to create some kind of um, obstacles in my life or bad people to come in, not physically in, but I meet or whatever. And um, so I just, you know, have to be very alert and very discerning, which we all do. But I get an abundance of these odd things, and some are good, that I follow up on. And it's wonderful, and it can be helpful. So I'd been talking as this uh, physical therapist who's very bright and very nice, kind, good-hearted, good soul, working on my knee. And uh, today he finally asked, he says, now this is, this is our last appointment. I said, well, for until January, because we didn't get enough set up. My surgeon wanted six weeks or said six weeks. And we, I missed a day, so I have a couple of weeks and a day left, five more sessions. And I would like all the help I can get on the knee and also to learn some spine building exercises that I will be assured, because he specializes in the spine, that I won't mess up and uh, get the arachnoiditis aggravated and do some other weird neurological problem I'll have then. The nausea is more than enough, if that's what it is. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's being narrowed down, and that's about what's all that's left. So he asked me that. I said, yes, you know, but I'll be back. And, and he says, well, you know, he says, you get these insights. He says, I've, I've been thinking. And then he, though he asked me, he gave me a little test, a little drill. Now you're, this is from God, and you, you believe in God, right? And you're, you're on the straight and narrow. And I assured him, yes, I am. He should have known that from my sharing, um, more just sort of out of the lower levels or of my of my conscious mind, not in my subconscious then, but 
I was sharing deeply because a lot of times when your body's being worked on or if there's going to be any kind of pain involved, our conscious mind will want to be relieved. And we go more into our subconscious or a, a deeper level of our conscious where we will talk and say things. It, it, it uh, distracts us from the pain or what's happening. And sometimes deeper things will come out of us when we're being when we're being distracted when we're distracting ourselves of course i'm a believer that god does that god is the one allowing things if we are striving to be in his will and we love him and serve him follow him and obey him so um uh anyway he he i cleared that up yes i'm on i'm biblical I am mainstream. I am. I just have this situation that I was born, uh, not 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 contemplative, but mystic. Didn't go into explaining that, but I said very much in love with God, and I s sort of laughed and said, "You probably gathered that because that's really about all I talk about." When someone lets me, and people who are being paid to do something to our bodies you know they're not going to tell us you can't talk about anything like that uh, they just let the clients speak and he one time i said well i just yap away in here he says all all the people do he says it's a way for them to escape from their body being put in in uncomfortable positions or painful ones or um arms and you know your limbs being stretched in ways they don't want to go so i assured him but i noted that after all this time i don't know how many maybe nine ten ten times nine times there um that uh, he he wasn't convinced he wasn't sure he wanted to make sure that's the temporal world and people and i i like it when they make sure because that that told me because he had never revealed i didn't know if he was a believer i got the sense of it over time that he was but i didn't know what faith or what um, depth or you know maybe he could have been a jewish i didn't think so but i didn't know and which would be fine if he were or some other religion but um, he today then wanted to know if I, you know, if you believe in the, if you read the Bible, if you believe in God, you're, you're, um, he didn't use the word conservative, but, you know, I think he said you're, you're on the straight and narrow, and yes, yes, and, and, um, and I said, I'm very careful, and, but he says, because I've had this question, and he says, and you have these insights, and, um, he wants to know about Revelation. He says, what do you think about Revelation, the book of Revelation? I said, well, I love the Apostle John, and I um, understand more how he had these ecstasies in prayer or however God uh, operated with him. Might have been an ecstasy in prayer or um, just thought flashing or telepathic Im inputting into John, the Apostle John, when he had been exiled on Patmos for two years. And he had a servant with him. I'm trying to think of the servant's name. Didymus? I don't know. If, no, I don't know. It's, it's in Revelation, the servant that he brought with him. And he, the, the, the man servant or the valet or whatever, um, type accompany, accompaniment that he was allowed in his exile on the island of Patmos could write and so he would write down what John was saying that God was telling him or the Holy Spirit um, one of the Trinity it wasn't Jesus either God probably the Holy Spirit who's the one that does most of the enacting for God. And so he uh, 
That's how Revelation is written. Well, John wrote, or John spoke some of it, and then he had these ecstasies in which he this all this information was being imparted to him and a vision that he would describe through revelation of the end times. So this man, this PT, I said, what is it about revelation? You have a question about. And he says, well, you know, just how, you know, it's, you know, things just seem to be getting so much worse. And he's got children. He's worried, worried about his children growing up. And, and he, and I said, yes, they are getting worse. I said, I see it and find it a lot, even with how I am and how people react. Um, it's not with embrace. It's with, with wrong judgment, with wariness, with misunderstanding, with labeling, like, you know, uh, does she believe in reincarnation? Of course not. But, you know, that's, <laughs> you know, it's the wariness. My own pain doctor has that wariness. Even though he so enjoys and has decided that I'm not really a Catholic because I don't act and think like the Catholics he's heard about or been indoctrinated about all these horrible things. So, um, and he's, of course, very leery of New Age, which I am too. I, I discern. And of the devil, I discern. Well, that was the other thing. Um, the PT asked, he says, have you, what do you know about that? Have you ever had experienced the devil? And I said, oh, yes, yes, you've got to learn. I said, everyone needs to learn how to discern and handle the devil. And so that'll be something I think I should be sharing about the different situations I've had. Just one person's experience over time with how the devil has worked on me from, from the beginnings to the end, the different types of things to try to disrupt and upset. And it could even be I had thought of this, even this uh, being incapacitated so long. When I want to get up, I have things I need to do, but I don't have the impetus and I don't have the health. It's either I don't have the impetus or I get this horrible nausea, which makes makes me debilitated. Um, so, uh, you know, that was something else he wanted to be assured of that I, you know, did had I and uh, I didn't go into what it was like, but I said, you know, it's the devil is real. And we have to be careful. The devil can assume forms, can even take on the image and likeness of people we know in our life. It's happened. It's happened to people in reality, and they get tricked. So um, God has allowed the devil a lot of leeway except for our souls. The devil is not allowed into our souls, which contain our will, our free will, and our intellect. So the devil can't force us to do something against our will. But the devil uses all other means with lots of temptation and wiles and, and means of deceiving and tricking and seeming very logical can use our emotions uh, to twist us and and uh, other types of temptation. Our understanding can affect, can twist our memories, can bring images to us that frighten us or that concern us or he be uh, an image of himself as even the Virgin Mary or Jesus. So um, yes, I assured him of that. But the end times, and I said, I haven't had anything directly on on that. I have uh, felt in kind with uh, John being in exile because I was in exile essentially on an island and knew the solitude and the, the um, God just taking me right down to the nub of every aspect of my being when I was on that island the hardships included. Um, so 
um, and spiritually also, and demonic things too there. So I, I said, but I told him, I said, mostly the things I had been sharing with him were things that I'd been talking about with my videos of, of the importance of love and of progressing ourselves as much as we can in this lifetime, not to waste our time, not to deny the spiritual and the religious and the, the Bible reading and the prayer and learning, growing through the, the, the levels of prayer to deeper or higher or wider levels of prayer. And, and those don't have to go in an order. If, if we are capable and gra can grasp, we can just move right on through. And by the, the, the working of the Holy Spirit, whose by grace it is we pray, and God's grace by which we pray. So it's not of our own doing, but it is of our own um, allowing and will, free will, that we give over to God and say, yes, I am willing, I want to, I desire, help me, help me pray more, help increase my faith, help me learn, love, help me to understand how God loves, how you love God, teach me, Holy Spirit, teach me. Um, and I said in Revelation, I said, yes, whatever insights I have had, has been that we are going to have an end time, that it's truth, but that the imagery is also can be very metaphorical, metaphoric, not a word, it's metaphorical, metaphoric, and that God provides to anyone who reads Revelation in whatever way the human understands at that point in time, in his or her life, or a child um, that might read it. And so uh, we have to understand that not all of the images are going to be as it's going to happen. I mean, it, it can be a metaphor to what will happen. And we won't know until it happens. We may not be here. Um, you know, we've had in our lives already, no matter how old you are, I'm old. So it's many times there have been groups at the end of the new year, or especially at the end of the, of the millennial, the millennial, that, um, and beginning of the new, that people would be determined and convinced and have followers that this was the end, this was the end times. And the world was going to be over. And But uh, it hasn't happened yet, obviously. Um, you know, for some, yes. You know, some some passed away. And it was, temporal world was over for them. But they started in eternity. <laughs> well, we're, they say we're in eternity now. It's still a progression with just a simple Passover, a new phase when we die. Except... Our souls go with us and our body is left behind. And I'd already said in another video, and we'll go over it with, with Catherine of Genoa, we want to make sure that we have asked, begged God with remorse and genuine meaning to forgive us all the wrongs we have done, God and others, and the, and the earth, all creatures, any, any wrongs we have done to others and to ourselves, and that um, we have a, a faith and a belief and a love of God, or at least open to loving God. In other words, that we have not rejected God when we die. We don't want to be in that state. And I miss, I mean, probably could have misunderstood this one. I said we cast ourselves into a hell then of our own doing of rejecting God on the other side, and we won't come back. Meaning, we won't come back to a chance to progress toward heaven. It doesn't mean coming back to earth. None of us will do that unless God sends us back to help someone. 
or for a request of needing help on behalf of someone. If God sends a person back from death for a, in a vision or a dream with a request that is serious and genuine and it's tested for not being the devil of the devil, then that is something to to consider and to try to meet the request of the person. Or if they're sent back to give information, then test the spirits. It's called test whether it's good or evil, of God or of the devil. Uh, so anyway, I, I said, I said, but God's main concern is for us now is not the end time so much, but of making sure that we are doing all we can in this world and in this life with our brothers and sisters all over the world to and with society to try to uplift it and not let this decline and this attack on religion keep going. This podcast that I listened to of the man uh, describing and giving excerpts out of that book, um, Testimony of Light, uh, he was confused even about what church the women belonged to, ready to pounce on Catholicism as, as dousing out anything that's good. No, but they do, they are, they feel very responsible and they utilize all the minds of the theologians and of, of uh, probably people who are uh, very in tune in unusual ways. I'm sure they know of different ones. And they uh, study and go over whatever someone has written or said or um, any, any movement that they have started or any phenomenon that they've had with a fine-tooth comb. In fact, maybe with like a wire brush that you use to brush thick, curly dog hair, gold, golden doodle hair. Okay, they go through it with a wire brush and really brush out anything that is suspicious, analyze and determine this is okay or not, or this has flaws. And if it has flaws or the person has flaws, then they discourage. They can't force anyone to stop. There's no book burning. There's no witches burned at the stake. That was in the Puritan time period. Um, but they, they recommend or say this is false teaching. And then the person can decide if they want to read something that's false and a waste of time and not good. You know, why confuse ourselves with something that's false? So, so um, anyway, I, I said that, that we need to be trying to stop this trend of spiritualism as a religion, as a developing religion of spiritualism, of the mind reading and the different gimmicks and the, um, somebody even, what is this? Uh, different drugs that people take to uh, chemically induce, not for medical reasons. Some of the drugs are used for medical cases, like it was a, a drug um, written down here, ketamine, ketamine, used to be called angel dust. And that's used in some extreme medical situations. And it can uh, create or induce a trip or a, 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 an experience and alter the brain chemistry. And the person needs to have an intention that's good or for whatever their ailment is when they are given this drug and a doctor has to be with the person and stay with the person through the process and after for so, many, for so long a period, a certain period of time to make sure that the person is okay and isn't having some kind of a terrible reaction to it or a bad experience, bad side effects that can damage the mind permanently. But they use it for extreme cases of depression 
in which no other medication has helped the person. And they're talking extreme depression, where the person is non-functional, zombie-like, uh, incapable of living uh, any kind of a life. When even sh brain shock treatments have, were, have been used and didn't help. So then they'll use ketamine. And there's a big risk with ketamine um, of some damage or some side effects that are with you then. So it's not a drug that's used lightly, and it can be fatal if 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 it something bad goes wrong, and that's why they're very careful with it. But other people in the past, or they probably still do, try to get a hold of it and use it for to get high, to get extremely high, and to have this kind of psychedelic experience and trip that if by God's grace they get through it, can sometimes be euphoric and and um, alter their consciousness and uh, maybe they you know start living in a better mode or something. But it can also go very bad. And I have a tragic case of a cousin. It wasn't ketamine, ketamine or ketamine. It was LSD. Back in 1967, it was went off to college and university and his parents thought having him go to another location in a more quiet area or, um, would be better for him because he had been dabbling in drugs. Well, instead of the lower key drugs, he got into LSD and it really affected his mind in his whole life. Very talented, very brilliant, and it, it, um, his life, I shouldn't say ruined it, um, but it, it altered what he was able to accomplish and do. He's been happy, but he's, um, and has, uh, he got very, um, in, really into the philosophy of Buddhism, which helped him. He, he knows the Dalai Lama personally and has met him many times and um and is uh, but he's had um other aspects of his life have been um uh, not stable and he's not able to really uh manage his uh existence and has to be supported and that kinds of things so um it altered him greatly and he was hospitalized for a long time. So, so people will do that though, just to have, have an experience. And that's the difference. You know, I, I assured this physical therapist that John's revelations and visions and locutions were truth. So yes, there will be that at some point in time in the, in the history and the existence of of the world and of humankind, this planet. And, um, but we're heading not in a good direction when, when it's more actively, there's never been a time period in the history of this country of it being uh, so few with faith in God. And so many others then who have gotten into spiritualism in the early 1900s, there was a movement I mentioned in the uh, later 1600s with quietism and other movements like that that verged on what we today would call New Age. Um, that uh, would happen and throughout things like that. But uh, witchcraft is high. Um, Forget what the, the male of witches are called. That's my head injury. I, I lose words, and then a few minutes later, if I focus, it'll come in. But so, um, so we, God wants us now to progress as much as we can spiritually through the means God has given us and G the life of Jesus and through Jesus, through prayer, through taking the time out for God in, in, in as much silence as we can manage, and if not, 
to brush away the, the noise, brush away the images or the interruptions, give ourselves to God, give our souls to God, renew it, renew our vows. As a, as a lay person, you can have vows. You can cons- ask God to consecrate you, to be consecrated to God. In our marriages or our lay lives, in our singlehood, um, so I, he said, oh, you know, and I said, yes. And I said, there's this, a woman who years ago had, um, 500 or more years ago had ecstasies during prayer and was told things by God on how to prepare ourselves and how to be at the time of our death. And then what, what purgation, what, what progression and purgation is like and how, how we will move through that. Uh, she was given that information to share so that we can learn from it. And uh, so anyway, he was, and so, but then um, I said, I said, well, if I get any, and I said, I'll pray and ask God if there's anything, I'll call and, and let you know. But then on the way out, my guardian angel, I am sure, because I've asked them, I've told them, I will try to be alert to what you are trying to tell me or have me do without you having to appear or, you know, have the, come into a corporeal form or a tangible touch like tap my shoulder and do a locution, you know, remind him that he can do this. So it's all just through knowing that today as i was leaving the physical therapy place i knew i was t- i had to leave a note ask for a piece of paper use their pen wrote out to the physical therapist you can ask god also your question about revelation and i wrote out little steps to do it I said you know when you're tonight before you go to bed or, you know, when you have quiet time. But usually after the kids are in bed and and you're laying there, your wife is, both of you could pray and ask. And, um, or if your family is curious or, and it's not curious, is concerned. He was concerned. What's going to happen to his family, to the country, to our world and the next generations when the quote-unquote end times do come? When, when what John said in Revelation comes into being. So I say you could have your family pray if they're old and can understand or interested and not going to, you know, don't want to intentionally upset children or worry them. So, um, but we all need to be aware at a certain point, we all should understand and read Revelation and then ask the Lord, Is there something in particular you need me to be doing to help this not to happen? And, uh, or if you have questions about will it happen in that way or is it coming soon or later, ask. Ask God anything if you're genuine. I also told you how I was being sort of impudent one time and, and, uh, took John John of the Cross this time rudely. I was I was being impudent. That's the word only word I can say. And he told me, you know, uh, and uh, that taught me always most sincere, most genuine and worthwhile. Make it worthwhile. It's not for some kind of uh, you know, appear to me and tell me if I'm going to marry this one or that one, or if I'm going to have a date Friday night, or or uh, if I'm going to, um, you know, just something frivolous, unless it's just deeply concerning to you. I guess I shouldn't put limitations on anything. The point is, is being genuine before God, humble and genuine and sincere. And that's what we would want also. 
and God has hosts and hosts of angels and souls. So um, it was like with Padre Pio when I said how people would wait in line and go in just because they wanted to see him or try to get a glimpse of any blood on his gloves that he wore over his bleeding stigmata and um, didn't really want to say their, you know, go over, talk over their sins or would um, underplay them and he would know and come out, go out, go out. All this huge line of other people who want to come for sincere things and aren't going to try to mess with me. That's that's legitimate. <laughs> and man is made in God's image. So I'm saying, you know, let's not be trivial with God. Very sincere. But we can ask him. And he'll answer if he wants. And I, I wrote out the different ways that God answers in scripture, in our minds, a thought that will come that you might think, oh, oh, that surely isn't it. No, don't let it slide by. Examine it. Surely maybe it will be the answer. And or in temporal ways, some person might say something and you have to give it time. Usually I think it happens fairly soon when we ask a question of God or he might say, not time. Be patient or focus on today. Focus on on loving God or something. Might have some other PT person come in and talk about something similar that would like, wow, this is the second time I've heard this. We've had experiences like that. And if it's a good thing and if it um, pans out through your discernment of is there anything wrong in this? Is there anything evil in this? And I understand, I'm sure there's people who have who have unsubscribed or whatever. Um, if I say something or they might get a, a sense that I am off kilter or um, uh, new age or, or not, not scriptural. And, and I was sort of amazed at this man to date questioned because I'd been so honest and forthright but it's a it's it's a serious thing and I admired him though for it I thought good for you I was surprised because I thought I had yapped enough while he was working on me um, but no so th that that made me realize though that something of me had been left with him that started him thinking and wanting to ask. And I'm telling him and I'm telling you, anyone can ask. These insights are for anyone, for all of us. And so that's how it works. And that's one of the things I'm supposed to be sharing is that these things aren't just for a few people to experience or to know. And I'm not talking about the mystical experiences. I'm talking about the experiences in life that we have of uncanny situations or, or of the devil attacking. He'll attack everyone and anyone he can do it to. And he tries. And he especially tries to block people who are loving God and trying to so the more we we uh, strive in learning more about God and how He loves, and then we have our our temporal experiences in which we find it this is a little bit hard to love this situation or person or something about ourselves is hard to love, and we have to pray and and consider how God loves and then try to to love, knowing that it's God who's doing the loving through us, or we're doing it through God's love. We're utilizing God in everything we do. He utilizes us. He's in us. That's how God is, is operating. He's in us. So we, we then learn that way, and then we love ourselves for whatever way we didn't before, or another person, 
or with greater understanding or patience or wisdom or mercy or with forgiveness. Even if we know that, that it's time to stick to our what God wants us to be doing and let people go sometimes for a time, knowing that likely when we're on our deathbed, the people who need to be there will come or who want to be there will come unless God chooses to take us suddenly. God can choose all these things, but we can ask, any of us can, and get the insights. And you will, you will. It's faith. I wrote that. I said, have faith. And I gave him my name. I said, if you have anything, questions, call me. I said, in the meantime, I too will pray. And I will pray that you get the answers that you're seeking. I love it when people try something that they hadn't thought to try or didn't think that was in their purview or their their ability scope or what we were allowed to do or something. I love it when, when this grows. It grows faith and it grows closeness to God and it will help build up religion, God, God in, in our country and in our world. Europe is suffering it. Probably about every country in you know, South Africa, uh, like in Nigeria, because I know um, Reverend Vincent there, um, just the schools that they have, the, the religious schools. His is just for boys, and it's that he's being transferred to this, this past week he went to it. And I think it was just filled to the gills. They will have like a 1,000 applicants for 300 spots. So it's um, uh, religion and love of God is on the rise in some places. But, of course, then they have a lot of Islam there, which is... Um, certain sects of it are very, very violent and his life has been in danger all along. They love to get a Catholic priest and kidnap them, try to get money and get the money and kill them. They kill them no matter what. So, um, anyway, I'm just wandering off all over the place. I will stop. That's my message for today and my one and two parts about how there it was, one person also, and I had to know immediately, stop talking. The pain doctor was not there and didn't want to be there. He was scared and wary of whatever and had a preconditioned idea that no matter what I was going to say, it was going to be wrong theology or something. And uh, to his, to what his his belief is, what his church group is, and what he had been taught. <clears throat> and then others, though, there was that PT who I didn't realize was paying attention and starting to wonder and was going to risk trusting a little bit and asking. And after he'd checked me again to make sure, you know, so, and good, that don't ever take offense from anyone. I don't from the pain doctor because I understand. I understand, and I check people. So we, all, we should. Um, because you say the devil can lurk and, and utilize any means to mess with us and to get us off track away from God and into confusion and into wrong thinking. So, as people have commented even about this trend of adult children estranging from their parents, in their 20s and 30s especially, um, for seemingly no reason. They don't tell their parents why, especially the mother, if it's a single mother. Um, Boom, that's it. No contact. The parents never know where they're going, where they're living. They change their phone numbers, on and on. 
And that has been deemed also a, a demonic thing of trying to destroy the, fa- the generational family in this country, and it will spread all over the world. This, this attitude and this action that follows from the attitude. And we were talking about that with the PT, and he had said that he was aware of it, that even younger, some therapists practically create a pathology in young clients that come in, in their 20s and 30s, and to have something that they have, that they have discovered, well, it helps their business for one thing, but it's a mindset. And um, maybe it's for competition, uh, to, to um, keep their business thriving or something, but it's evil. So, so the devil will do anything to get us. So we, we do have to cl- cl- check people. And if you don't feel comfortable, get away. Get away from me, even. I mean, not even. Why not? If it's not resonating, if it's something that seems wrong or I I misstate something, write in the comments so that I can clarify or learn. Yes, I did. I'm sorry. I had wrong thinking or something Um, or or misstated something. But... um, trust in God. We really can't trust because uh, anyone can be messed with by the evil one at any given point. God bless his real presence in us and let us keep striving to learn God, learn his love, and in God, love as God loves.